Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to analyze the poem Traveling Through the Dark by William Stafford. I would like to start with the central idea of the poem. This poem dramatizes the mental conflict between duty and emotions. Uh, let me give an example. If my son is appearing in SE examination, and if I'm the invigilator in the same classroom, let's suppose I saw him cheating in the examinations. Now, in such case, my duty as invigilator urges me to expel him out of the class because I saw him cheating. But at the same time, my emotion does not let me do so. After all, how can I expel my son and spoil his future? Now, in that very condition, I experience the mental conflict between my duty and emotions. In this very mental conflict, one wins, either duty or emotion. If I expel him out of the class, that is the victory of my duty. And if I just let him write, turning my deaf ear towards him, then that is the victory of my emotions. In the same way, in the poem too, the speaker experiences the mental conflict. What wins? Duty or emotions that we will see in the poem. To begin with, this poem takes place at night time. The speaker is driving his car along the road by the mountainside. He is driving his car along the road which is called Wilson River Road. So night time and Wilson River Road are the setting of this poem. While driving the car in his headlight of the car, he sees something. What he sees? He sees a dead deer lying on the road. Thereafter, no sooner he sees the dead deer on the road, he makes up his mentality to push the deer out of the road because the road is narrow. And on the one side of the road, there is Wilson River. And on the other side of the road, there is a canyon. And therefore, while driving, even a slight error might cause accident because there is the chance of the car falling into the river or the car also might fall into the canyon. So with the intention of pushing the deer out of the road, the speaker gets up the car, he walks towards the deer and examines the deer closely. In his examination, he finds that it's a doe, it's a female deer. It is dead as suggested by two words in the poem, stiffened and cold. And moreover, he also discovers it to be pregnant as suggested by the phrase lars in the belly. When he touches the deer with his fingers, the speaker can feel the warmth on the belly of the deer. He feels that the belly is still warm. This very warmth makes him realize that the fawn inside the belly of the deer is still alive, never to be born. Now, at this point, the speaker emotions for the unborn fawn awakens. After all, how can he push the deer into the river or into the canyon when the fawn is still alive? Now, at this point, the speaker experiences the mental conflict, the very mental dilemma, because on the one hand, his duty as a traveler urges him to push the deer out of the road and to continue his journey. But on the other hand, his emotion awakened after realizing the condition of the unborn form does not let him do so. Now, the speaker is in mental dilemma. He cannot decide what to do and what not to do. In fact, he's trapped between his duty and emotions. When he realizes that the pawn is still alive, at this point, even the physical action ceases. First stanza, second stanza, and third stanza of the poem deal with the physical action because 
we notice the speaker driving a car and his act of seeing a dead deer on the road and discovering it to be dead and pregnant and also realizing that the fawn alive inside the building. Whereas in the fourth stanza, one can notice the mental action in the sense that it captures the mental conflict between duty and emotion of the speaker. At this point, physical action is replaced by mental actions. In the fourth stanza, what happens is the speaker is standing on the road by the side of the dead deer and he's confused, not being able to decide what to do and what not to do. His duty said something which is rejected by emotion and his emotion demands something rejected by duty. And finally, what he does is, after thinking a lot, he finally pushes the deer into the river and he continues his journey. The last two lines of the poem are very important for us because in the last two lines, we notice mental conflict is resolved. Mental conflict is resolved along with the victory of duty over emotion. The speaker chooses duty, not his emotion. And another thing is, the last two lines also include both physical and mental actions in the sense that thinking is mental action, whereas pushing the deer into the river is an example of physical action. The last two lines end with a moral lesson for the readers, that is, one should prioritize duty over emotion because a dutiful man can make his life beautiful. There is always a question. A question can be raised. Could not be the phone saved? Why did not the speaker think about other, inter other options? Then when we approach this question from the perspective of eco-criticism, then we interpret deer as the nature. Deer in the poem stands for nature. And the killing of deer by man is in fact the destruction of nature by man. The fawn, the deer could not be saved because, because once nature is destroyed, it cannot be restored. What is done cannot be undone. Along with this, we come to the end of this poem. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching.